All right, so before we get into today's video, we gotta talk about the last episode of Phineas Flynn's Law, because I gave my underrated songs list, and y'all in the comments section went wild with your favorites. Some good honorable mentions were brought up, like Drew Solstein Driving Test Waltz, Floor After Floor, Humiliating Dance of Contrition, Alien Heart, and a few more, but man, I did not expect the number of times that I got this comment. You're kidding me, right? You're, you're kidding me. You're kidding me, right? You're, you're kidding me. You're kidding me, right? You're, you're kidding me. Like, guys, you do realize Ain't Got Rhythm was nominated for an Emmy, right? It's time for... Cancel everything on your calendar this week and replace it with binge-watching Gossip Girl on... on Netflix or whatever. So, over the years, Phineas and Ferb has grown and evolved, with everything from the voice of Phineas changing... That's it! I know what we're gonna do today! Guys, I know what we're gonna do today! ...to the art style becoming cleaner, sharper, and more on model as the series went on. And as Phineas and Ferb grew as Disney's favorite TV franchise, expanding into the parks, the internet, and video games, okay. Disney looked for ways to continue the series beyond its eventual end. So today we're looking at all the Phineas and Ferb spinoffs that we know about, some that got made, and others that didn't. We're fireside girls, one and all, and together we belong. This is the Fireside Girls song, and it's not too terribly long. So the first spinoff I want to talk about is the long-rumored Isabelle and the Fireside Girls spinoff. The first I can tell we got wind of this was in 2010 in a New York Times article, and apparently that was enough to justify the series having its own wiki. But I digress. Here's what it said. There is a surge of new Phineas and Ferb content on the way, including a TV movie. A potential spinoff is centered on the Fireside Girls, a gaggle of Girl Scout types that often aid the stepbrothers in their adventures. Disney is also working on a related live-action talk show where the two characters, as cartoons, interview celebrities. What makes this interesting is that two of these three projects actually came to fruition. Take Two with Phineas and Ferb, which we'll get into in a minute, and the TV movie Across the Second Dimension. So what was this spinoff going to be about? Well, presumably each episode would entail the Fireside Girls attempting to earn a new patch, with each new patch providing the scenario for the episode. The show would have likely expanded on the lore of Miss Fireside, the origins of the organization, and possibly would have had a B-plot with Professor Poof and Plots and Isabella's dog, Pinky. I'm Pinky the Chihuahua! Like many of the spinoffs I'll mention, this idea was snuck into Phineas and Ferb as a backdoor pilot. The first one was made during Season 2, with the episode Isabella in the Temple of Sap. A companion episode to Bubble Boys, it showed the Fireside Girls' adventure as they attempted to retrieve the sap from the Moroccan nut tree for Phineas and Ferb's bubble mix. The idea was revisited again in Season 4 with Bee Story, which was a companion episode to Bee Day. This one followed a more likely premise for the show itself, with the Fireside Girls attempting to earn their beekeeping patch, but accidentally getting sent on a wild adventure as bees themselves. Overall, the fact that two proof-of-concept episodes got made, and that info about the idea being considered made it into a public article means that it probably came pretty close to getting a green light, but may have been shut down for any number of reasons. Still, I think, now I'm making this very clear, I THINK I found the long-lost opening theme song and closing theme song demos for the series. I've edited the song demo with some footage from the episodes to give a sense of what the show might have been, and I'll share the closing song towards the end of the video. One little spark to get the fire going, two sparks more, and now it's even glowing. Everyone is warm and smiles are all around. But we keep it in control so we don't burn nothing down. <laughs> So, Take Two with Phineas and Ferb is at least fairly well known, given that Disney made the effort to put all the episodes on Disney Plus in their Phineas and Ferb collection. But it's worth mentioning since it came out at the peak of Phineas and Ferb's popularity. The animation is the first thing of note here. It looks nearly as bad as the second Cliptastic Countdown, which deserves its own video. It's in this case, at the head of the man who is not your co host! <laughs> That was close. With the uncharacteristically thick line art and Adobe Flash style. But given that the budget likely went all into getting the guest stars, it's honestly no surprise. 
The show premiered on December 3rd, 2010, and ran for 20 episodes with a long list of guest stars, many of who are still relevant today. Disney really made sure the series appealed worldwide, too, spending extra to get guests exclusively for international airings in places such as Latin America, Brazil, Australia, and South Korea. And to be fair, the writing overall is basically on par with the original series, even if this spinoff isn't canon in any way, shape, or form. Oh. Oh. Nope. oh, that's not supposed to... Huh. Hey, that's Jack Black. Oh. Interesting, but not fur. That's not fur. Really cool, but not fur. Dude. So it's a fun diversion to check out if you have the time. Product of its time, and a pretty good one at that. He was the king of evil science until things went a little awry. Now he's turning over a brand new leaf and he's not so bad a guy. I'm starting over at 1 to 101! Now, as Phineas and Ferb's season 4 production was wrapping up, the team took care to ensure there were ways for the series to live on with very specific one-off episodes leading to the series of hour-long specials produced afterwards. One of these was a spinoff called Doof 101. This series is based around the premise that Doofenshmirtz finally has to face penalty for his many evil schemes and is given the choice between hard time or community service. So one day after turning good, he has a trial. <laughs> oh man, the American justice system moves so fast. But it turns out he teaches science at Vanessa's high school. It's also quite interesting to see the infamous bug trio appear for the first time here. They were a concept that Dan Swampy always pitched with Phineas and Ferb originally, and you can see them on the pitch packet for this series. They were cut because they made Phineas and Ferb too complex, but in their first appearance here in Doof 101, they got special guest stars J.K. Simmons, Josh Gad, and Steven Root to voice them, and not even gonna lie, it's really funny. What I'm worried about is what are we going to tell the giants about ourselves? Floyd throws up on his food. It's true, I do. Let's not lead with that. I can also smell through my hair. A lot of the Phineas and Ferb fandom doesn't like them, but I think they're great, even if they serve no real purpose to the story at hand. There's also a weird subplot where the principal of the school, who looks like Norm's original head, has a grudge because Charlene married Doof. Yeah, it was a spinoff. Ultimately, I think this backdoor pilot felt too random to be the basis for a full series, even if the premise is ripe for comedy. Plus, Deuce Fate as a science teacher seems to be the one the future episode, Actor Age, confirms is canon to the original timeline. So, that's kinda neat. Doofenshmirtz? Great googling moogly. I thought he'd given up his evil ways when we placed him as a high school science teacher. The Phineas and Ferb timeline changes, but that's a whole nother video. It's time for Doofenshmirtz Daily Dirt! Doof's Daily Dirt is my favorite of the direct Phineas and Ferb spinoffs, I'll say that right now. It's basically in the format of Doof having an internet commentary show where he discusses relevant topics in pop culture in a way that's rather unprecedented. And Maroon 5, there's probably five of those guys and they're all purple, and Bruno Mars is a bouncer from, from Mars or something, and Lady Gaga, uh, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe if she was wearing a pacifier that would make more sense. Hmm, it's no wonder Disney took all these down after the series was over. Anyways, despite being a weekly show, it was named Doof's Daily Dirt for that sweet, sweet alliteration. It was released from January 3rd, 2013 to February 27th, 2014, right after the end of season three and the start of season four of the main show. The show was written by a lot of the same staff, and despite being animated in Flash and being made on a very low budget, it was just as funny as you'd expect a web show with Doof to be. From creating songs based off original comments to acknowledging current events and celebrity figures that would be off limits for the main show, it's a miracle that this got made. Or filibusters bore national rally leaders, which, which sort of makes sense, but I can't imagine it would come up in conversation that often. Anyway. Disney really loved boosting Doof as a real character, going so far as to have Doof cross over into Shark Tank, as well as commentate on the Mission Marvel special that aired in August of the same year that Doof's Daily Dirt officially ended. In addition, Doof ran a Twitter account alongside his show to interact with fans, which was also abandoned after the end of the show. For many years, we thought Doof's Daily Dirt was over, but in 2018, shortly before the Phineas and Ferb Effect crossover, Disney decided to return to the classic format, just without the Daily Dirt branding. The idea is that Doof and Schmertz started a new podcast where he interviews Weird Al as his first guest. Most of this episode isn't animated at all, with just a still of Doof being used, but any hope of a series return brought on by this episode was short-lived. Just a one-off. I have none other than than the, the guy who does all the songs with the different lyrics that you love. He's a national treasure, Weird Al Yankovic! Overall, it's definitely worth checking out the archive of these, which many people have re-uploaded since Disney removed them years ago. Many of them go places you wouldn't expect and are very, very memorable. 
While it's sad the show never got an official send-off, I have to imagine Disney's looking at reviving something similar, given Dan's very, very large TikTok following. Deuces! I don't know what that means. We got animal agents wearing brown fedoras. If you're a villain, then you can't ignore us. This is the spinoff most people remember, as it was heavily marketed by Disney to bridge the gap between Phineas and Ferb and Milo Murphy's Law. Originally intended to be a series, Disney instead picked up the concept as a 45 minute special. And to say it's controversial within the fandom would be putting it mildly. While it retains the same sense of humor, the show feels targeted at a notably younger audience than the original. There may be no I in teamwork, but... Much of the time in the special feels wasted with numerous plots that kind of go nowhere only to fill time, with payoffs that don't really reward your investment in the episode itself. While the twist that the villain ended up being a bug was neat, it never really got fans talking, and the list of ideas for the rest of the series shared by one of the writers, Joshua Perret, seems much more interesting than what the episode ended up being. There were some notable changes to line art colors and overall style that didn't carry over to any other Phineas and Ferb project. But as for me personally, I still enjoy watching this one from time to time. It's another instance of Dan and Swampy trying to figure out how to tell the story of Doofenshmirtz as a good guy after the Phineas and Ferb summer, which is a story that's absolutely worth telling. The continued story of the Bug Trio makes me laugh as the voice actors deliver wonderfully funny performances, and the final act of the special does have a number of nice payoffs, especially for Karen, the cat. And of course I would be remiss without mentioning the killer theme song, arguably the best of any Dan and Swampy show yet. Overall, I'm glad we got to see this one, but if it had gotten picked up, we would have missed out on perhaps my favorite continuation of the franchise yet. It's my world and we're all living in it! <laughs> ah yes, this one is my favorite, if you can't tell by the amount of content on my channel about it. Basically, if you haven't seen it, but you should, it's on Disney+. Plus. It's a series set in the same universe as Phineas and Ferb, but without the same formulaic plot. The basic premise is that a 13-year-old middle schooler, Milo Murphy, is cursed with hereditary Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong around him, will. The show follows his life with his family and friends as he learns to make the most of every day. Sound familiar? The show is serialized, characters grow and change, relationships develop, and there are story arcs. I could talk about this show for hours, and I have on my channel, but if you haven't seen it, Go watch it on Disney Plus without looking up any spoilers. What I will say that is relevant to this video is that Dan Swampy used the show to continue the story of Doofenshmirtz as a good guy in the most unique way yet. Oh, and there's time travel and aliens. Go watch it. It was absolutely worth the Alka Files being dropped. As of right now, it still hasn't been officially canceled, but the only way Disney is going to greenlight new episodes is if you watch it on Disney Plus. Mom, Sarah's being mean to me. I'm not your mom. And Sarah, stop being mean to your brother. He's not Whatever. Right. I'm going out. Everyone, please pick up their clothes by the time I get back. Thank you. So this one is by far one of the most surprising, as the Disney marketing team has been gearing up for Candace Against the Universe. One of the things they've been doing are these random ring shorts, of which a few are crossovers. Doof started with a few of his own, calling various places as he tries to deal with the Nader's gone wrong, and the writing and animation are incredible for such small productions. I, I just need to get rid of Perry the Platypus in order to finish my baby in Nader. Baby what now? I'm going to shoot everyone in the Tri-State area with this! Right here and they were going Okay, this got weird. Gone are the days of easily visible Adobe Flash, replaced with animation and boards that feel far similar to the main Phineas and Ferb series. While random rings aren't exclusive to Phineas and Ferb, they do feature new details, such as how Doof learned Perry's name, and are really fun crossovers. Right now, Doof has only crossed over with Big City Greens, but it's really neat to see these characters interact, and amazing that Disney is promoting their shows in such a fun way. There's likely more of these to come, as the series isn't over yet. He's a robot from space, she's a little girl. They come from totally different worlds. If you think their world's a bark, you're missing fun. Though it might seem unusual, that's the norm. That's the norm. That's the norm. That's the norm. That's me! Okay, so this was never actually considered as a spin off. I just really like the concept. So I, I put it in. Moving on. 
And so we arrive at the latest Phineas and Ferb spin-off, the Chibi Tiny Tales series. Continuing to cross-promote the new movie and regular Phineas and Ferb marathons on the channel, Disney decided to include Phineas and Ferb in their already established Chibi Tiny Tales series, which had already done episodes for Big Hero 6 and Amphibia before. The first of the Phineas and Ferb Chibi Tales actually debuted last Friday, and it was a retelling of the classic roller coaster story. That's never been done before. But with a new twist. Doofenshmirtz has a Give It legs -inator. At least that's what I'm dubbing it. It's weird, but cool. And the style and fast pace of the short really fits. Time will tell how these chibi shorts are received as there are still a few more to air. And so we arrive at the end of our journey through the world of Phineas and Ferb that isn't exactly Phineas and Ferb. It's so crazy to me how many of these spinoffs actually got made based off the show, even if we only saw the pilot versions of some of them. And with Candace Against the Universe probably bringing something of a Phineas and Ferb revival with it, if Dan Poffenmeyer is to be believed, I'm excited to see more. It seems like Disney's taking the same route with Phineas as Cartoon Network took with Adventure Time, reviving it with a bunch of longer specials to drive views to the streaming site, and honestly, I'm here for it. I mean, what did you expect? But as for right now, Swampy's working on Pete the Cat for Amazon, and Dan has a new pilot that Disney might just be ready to greenlight, so there's a lot happening outside of the universe, and the future of Milo Murphy's Law is still up in the air as well. So go watch it on Disney+. Plus. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Phineas Flynn's Law, and- Oh wait, you want to know what happened with Dan following me on TikTok, right? Well, first, I waited a few days that I didn't seem like the world's neediest fanboy. Then, I sent a few messages. And a few more. And a few more. Nothing. Days passed. I made a questionable meme about the lack of a reply. But then one day, I came home from work to find that Dan was hosting a Zoom AMA. For free! I rushed to my closet to get my recurring raccoon shirt to celebrate. I hopped in the Zoom call and watched. And waited. And sure enough, he noticed. I also see that someone has a recurring raccoon shirt on which i'm gonna to have to take a picture of and send it to my friends who who you know recurring raccoon was a um was a point of contention in the writer's room can, can you can you can you can you puff it up there so we can we can there we go look at that i'm gonna i'm gonna send that to valerie and she's gonna love it i was ecstatic i messaged him the next day and i got a response of course i knew valerie though I, we followed each other on twitter but still, I wanted to see if I could get Dan on an interview to complete my series. So, of course, I messaged him to let him know that Milo was on the front page of Disney+. Plus. But he sent me two messages in reply. And one was the one I was waiting for. When the world is gone, we will linger on. When the world is burned. Special thanks to Glitchy Bits for this amazing fan art. This is a new segment that I'm doing, so if you have fan art of me, feel free to DM me or at me on Twitter for a chance to be featured. Special thanks to Rovanami and Milo Murphy for being my top patrons, and I'll see you later this week for Candace Against the Universe. Finally! By the campfire.